So several years ago in Europe, they actually started a trend of having a month of the year where you're just completely sober, no alcohol going into the system. And I know there's a lot of you listening that do indulge in alcoholic beverages, but have you given yourself a break lately? Maybe it's sober October, maybe it's sober January. Let's dive into it. Why? Why is this so important? Giving yourself a break has crazy implications on the body. Research actually shows that abstaining for alcohol for just 30 days allows way better sleep. This is because of HRV and what it does to your heart rate variability and your recovery and how your body's dealing with stress. They had more energy, makes sense, you're not groggy. You lost more weight because typically, not only does it put calories on, but it makes you eat a lot more calories. According to a British medical journal study, they also lowered and altered their blood pressure and cholesterol levels and reduced cancer-related proteins in the blood. That's a pretty big reason why. So maybe you should consider cutting out the alcohol for a month. Those are crazy big benefits. And you can have mild symptoms at first. If you were to cut that out, typically what is seen medically is you'll see uh, anxiety levels could go up, uh, shakiness, headaches, nausea, vomiting, sweating, sleep disruptions, and then even severe symptoms, even after two or three days, if a person has been drinking heavily, they can hallucinate, delirium, a racing heart, a fever. So if you do come off and you were regularly drinking, know that you might go through some of that, but it is absolutely well worth it. So let me go through five other tips. If you feel you may have over consumed alcohol, you want to take a break from it, you want some strategies to cut it out, I just think it's a topic that's worth talking about because so many people struggle or don't want to talk about it. So number five, plan for urges. If you're used to indulging with that in a social setting or some kind of reward or at the end of your day or you have some kind of rhythm, there's some kind of de-stress, when you make a plan for a dry month, then you got to have a plan to deal with the urges. It may not always be easy to stick with it, but the inevitability of an urge that's gonna happen at some point, you have to have a plan of how you're gonna overcome it. You really need to ride out the urge, kinda of like riding a wave, it's gonna pass, it will not stay, but you need to ride it out, which means you need to get your mind and your attention off of the urge. But if you don't act, it'll definitely subside if you don't give into it. So you're gonna have some of those cravings if this is something you're specifically doing quite often. And there's simple strategies to employ when the urge strikes that can help quickly change you know the urge in you change the scenery go move go for a walk go work out if you're inside go outdoors if you're outside go indoors if you're with friends take some time by yourself small environmental changes can help set you up to get your mind off that urge and if you go complete abstinence you'll feel better about yourself and reinforce this positive dry month over and over when you're starting to feel better when you're losing the weight when you're exercising more you're sleeping better it's a message to your body that's telling you hey i really like feeling this way it's going to want to go that way more and more often with less and less urges. Number four, whether it's wanting a nice glass of wine or a Friday after work drink or some kind of cold drink at a ball game, many times, particular times, locations and situations set us up for this. So you wanna avoid some of those situations or have a plan going into the gathering with your friends or the, you know, the ball game or on Friday afternoon, what are you gonna reward yourself with? Because there's triggers and they're crazy important that our brain just gets neurons fused in for triggering some of the habits that we do. So you've got to address the habit and the habitualness of potentially that you have around alcohol or eating food or whatever else may be. So people think like, oh, I can never go to a bar again or to a game again or to that Friday thing again. But that's ridiculous because you're still going to go there. You just need to have a different approach, some kind of change in the environment or avoid those short term so you can have success long term. Number three, don't give up. One day is a slip up, okay? But two days is a habit. So if you slip up once, don't slip up two days in a row, okay? Don't feel guilty, it just happens. Just begin again the next day and begin your process of giving your body a break from a possible chemical. And you might be able to add it back in down the road, but you're at least given this period of time where you're dedicated to you and to your health. Number two, avoid the temptations. Keep alcohol out of your house. Keep the habit not around you. When you're invited to someone else's home, bring something with that you're gonna drink so you're not tempted. And number one, find that substitute. If it's a sparkling water, if it's water with lime, if it's coffee, if it's earlier in the day, if it's a smoothie, if it's some kind of snack you're gonna have, find a substitute of something you enjoy to satisfy just that little urge, just that little need, some tips. Maybe you should try cutting it out, the massive impact it can have on your cancer levels, on your blood pressure, on your cholesterol, on your weight, on your energy, on your sleep. If you could use more of that, try a dry month. And if you get into a hard pinch, try those five tips that I gave you there.
And if you feel like you have had too much or you just need a break from the alcohol and you want to undo the damage it did to your body, then drinking one glass of this per day is the best way to repair a damaged liver. Check this video out right here.